Hey guys, Vlad here with AV Tastro. So today I want to talk about a topic that doesn't really come up too often in discussions that's regarded, you know, related to astronomy, but it's really important. Um, you know, I, I read uh, like cloudy night forums and, you know, other astronomy forums pretty often. And, you know, I always hear about people that, you know, they kind of tend to not want to observe during the winter, and that's totally understandable because it is really cold outside. Um, I live here in the northwest and it does get, you know, fairly cold. I mean, you know, uh, most of the time it's not below freezing here. Although, um, we do, uh, or we used to before the pandemic, go to star parties um, in central Oregon where it gets, I mean, you know, like really cold. Um, I remember one specific uh, star party that I went to in Morrow, Oregon. If you're curious, you know, I've got a blog post about it on my blog. Um, or you could look, look it up on the maps, it's just kind of out in the middle of nowhere in the boonies in the high desert. Incredibly dark skies, uh, but you know, as you, you know, as you might have uh, imagined, if you're observing in the winter and there's clear skies, that usually means that it's really, really cold. And yeah, I, I showed up to the star party with just my normal, like, you know, like kind of like winterish type of clothes, and it's, it was one of the coldest experiences I've ever had. So after that, I've kind of worked on um, upgrading my uh, observing gear. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, let's check out what you can do to stay warm while you're observing. All right, all right. So, um, you know, dressing up for observing isn't too much different than like other activities that are cold weather activities. The main difference probably is that when you're doing other, you know, cold weather activities, let's say you're snowboarding, skiing, hiking in the snow, snowshoe and snowmobiling or whatever, you're usually pretty active and, you know, I mean, you know, everybody kind of knows that the more active you are, the warmer you tend to be, um, you know, because your body's generating the body heat. Uh, for observing, you know, I mean, most of the time you're just kind of sitting there looking through the scope or if you're doing imaging and you're not in your car or like wherever, somewhere warm, you know, you're just, you're not really moving around too much. So there is, you know, there is kind of a distinction between, you know, cold weather observing and other, most other cold weather, you know, activities just because you aren't moving too much. All right, so um, kind of getting into, you know, how you should dress. You know, you could go out and spend a ton of money on, you know, like cold weather equipment. Like you could go to REI and I'm sure they'll talk you into buying like 500 bucks worth of cold weather gear. Realistically, you don't really need to spend a lot of money to stay warm while you're observing. Um, you know, most of this, you know, it's kind of translates from, you know, what you might already know about, you know, dressing up warmly. Uh, but there are a few tips that I've kind of discovered myself, you know, they might not be as, you know, as obvious if you've never kind of, you know, kind of went through like this whole thing. So, uh, yeah, let's kind of cover them. I'll kind of start with your base layer. Uh, for my base layer, you know, a lot of times I'll just wear a t-shirt um, and like sweat type of pants, uh, depending on how cold it is. Um, sometimes, you know, if I'm at a start party and I was already wearing jeans, you know, like during the day, I'll just keep on wearing them, like I don't really change them. Uh, and that's, you know, like if it's moderately cold. If it's really cold, I'll for sure, you know, have some kind of thick sweats. Or uh, the other thing that you can do is, um, so I also ride motorcycles. This is actually my thermals from my motorcycle uh, gear. So I have this, you know, it's kind of made out of that thermal type of material. Um, I have this for my full body. So I've got, you know, the pants, the, you know, the shirt. Um, I even have like the little helmet mask. I've got the socks, I've got the gloves. So I've got, you know, the whole body. You know, these do cost, you know, some money. They are really lightweight. Um, Warmness wise, I mean, are they warmer than like, let's say sweats and like, you know, decent, you know, like long sleeve? Um, probably maybe a little bit. I wouldn't say terribly much so. So uh, these might be more comfortable, especially if you kind of prefer tighter fitting, you know, clothing. So yeah, that's, you know, you know, that's definitely an option for uh, uh, your base layer. Although it is more expensive, so it is kind of a downside. All right, now so now, now that we've talked about the base layer, you know, um, when I'm observing in cold weather, I find that one of the first things to get cold while I'm observing is my feet because, you know, they're touching the ground and the ground just kind of, you know, like sucks out uh, heat from, uh, from your feet if you're not wearing the proper shoes. So the, you know, the best solution that I found after much trial and error, um, 
you know, I don't claim to have invented a lot. I'll, I'll claim this one for myself. <laughs> Uh, just because I just kind of came up with it myself, uh, but basically I bought these larger snowshoes These are like I normally wear like a size 10 and a half. These are like a size 13 I think so I purposely bought them larger than I need Why as I mentioned earlier? I'm um, like, you know, if I was actually walking around these a lot This probably wouldn't work too well for me, you know, just because it's too big But you know when we're observing we're mostly sitting uh, so having a larger shoe, it actually gives you like a little bit bigger of a po pocket of air uh, around your foot. And in addition to that, uh, what I've got is I put these reflective uh, like soles in there. So that way, you know, when your foot is on the ground, right, the ground isn't just sucking out the heat from your foot. Um, a lot of the heat kind of gets reflected back at your foot. So that's really cool. The other thing that I do, because you know I do have that extra space with the larger shoe around my toes, because my toes tend to get cold as the quickest, is I've got these warm packs. So, um, like Hot Hands makes these, and they make them in a couple of different you know sizes and that type of deal. What I'll do is I'll just throw one of these in each you know shoe, kind of like towards the toe, so it's just kind of sticking around there. And you know, this combo of the sole and the hot hands in there, it just works great. I mean, it keeps my feet really warm, um, even, you know, in really cold weather. So uh, this is, um, you know, believe me, a tip that if you do, you will be happy if you're doing, you know, cold weather observance, so uh, pretty cool. All right, so now that we got our feet, you know, nice and warm, what do I do for the outer layer? Um, you know, I don't do anything too special, but basically what I usually wear is um, snow pants. And, you know, with these, I also have them a little bit larger than I probably normally would if I was wearing them for, um, you know, like let's say if I was actually snowboarding or something like that. Because that also kind of gives you that extra cushion of air that will keep you warmer throughout the night. So these guys... Uh, for my jacket, uh, what I do is I just wear a um, like one of these puffer jackets. Usually, either this one or I've got a few other ones. Um, and yeah, you know, with with having uh, the inner shell uh, with like either the thermals or like a sweatshirt and this. Um, Usually that, that'll be enough. You know, obviously if you're observing a really cool uh, environment, the more layers that you have, the warmer you will be. So that's just kind of like a general thing, um, just about any cold weather activities. Alright, so now kind of getting up to the head portion of observing. A um, couple of different things. Uh, you know, one thing that I'll say, you know, just right off the bat, you know, I'm at a lot of star parties or I used to go before the pandemic. And I always see people, you know, they're observing and, you know, like maybe they'll have their hood on or they've got like a baseball cap on and it's like freezing temperatures. I mean, your first line of defense of staying warm in general, I'm not even, I'm talking about your whole body feeling, you know, warm, is your head feeling warm. So, I mean, the very first thing that you should have, oh, there it is, <laughs> I know I put it somewhere is, you know, just wear some kind of decent, you know, warm hat, depending on how warm uh, or how cold it is outside. Um, you know, this is a pretty thin hat, uh, so, you know, sometimes I'll wear, you know, a thicker hat on this. So this, you know, like, pretty much anytime it's kind of cold, I'm wearing a hat. Uh, like, if you've watched any of my other videos where I'm out at the scope, chance are, you know, I'm wearing a hat. So yeah, that makes you feel uh, a lot warmer just, you know, just from the get-go. Alright, so moving on from the hat, you know, you've got your hat on, you know, let's say, you, you know, you don't have it, like, where I don't want to spend, you know, any money on extra gear. Uh, chances are you, or, you know, like, I'm not going to tell anybody if you use your wife's scarf, but, you know, a scarf, like, just wrapping this thing around your neck, um, you know, and I, you know, I never, like, make it really tight, just kind of loosely, and then, you know, actually, you know, zipping up your coat around it, um, that also increases your you know, your warmth level, your neck being actually covered and warm by a lot. Uh, so highly recommended, I totally recommend, you know, wearing a scarf if you have no other, you know, options that I'll kind of talk about in a second. Um, and then lastly, usually if it's pretty cold outside, so besides the hat, the scarf, 
Um, I actually will put on my hood. Um, I like to wear the hood for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it does you know block out some of the street light if there's street light around, around so that's really nice too. Um, and in general, you know, I just find that it kind of just reflects a lot of the heat, even that your face a little bit, you know, because typically, you know, when you're observing, right, like if I'm observing through the scope, um, you know, you're kind of hunching down somewhat at the eyepiece. And, you know, it's, you're basically, you know, heat rises, right? So as you kind of radiate heat, it kind of goes back to your face. So that's really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah. All right, all right. So now, you know, I've kind of, you know, taken up some of the stuff that I was wearing. Um, one recent thing that I picked up uh, that, you know, I've kind of tried a little bit, I'm looking forward to trying a lot more, is just the full on warm. This is kind of like uh, that, like soft, like fleece type of material hood. This thing, you know, if I was observing in kind of cold weather, I might just wear this. If I was observing in really cold weather, I'd actually put this, you know, kind of right over my hat right and this hood um first of all it's got like this little thin that will cover your face if you want or you could pull it down you know to kind of below your chin so either way uh what i like about it though is that it will uh nicely tuck into your uh coat basically so you know if you zip this up it's, I mean, you know, obviously you don't really have to wear a scarf at that point, so this thing will kind of cover your whole uh, neck area too. Um, and the other thing, let me kind of pull this forward. As you can see, this is actually really kind of long enough to where, you know, if I'm observing at the scope, right, It'll, uh, it'll block out a lot of the stray light. So this thing, you know, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I'm really looking forward to using this a lot more, uh, especially during the winter months when, you know, you, you actually want to wear it for the warmth factor. So yeah, that's really cool. All right, all right, so by now my hair probably looks like a mess, but that's all right. You know, I kind of taken off all the hats and hoods and stuff like that. The last recommendation that I'll make, uh, you know, for the guys in the group, or maybe even gals, like if you know, if, if you shave other parts of your body, is a lot of the times if I'm doing cold weather observing, I'll kind of get closer to the camera. I do not shave. Um, I've actually found that to be really kind of important whether I'm doing cold weather camping, you know, like adventure motorcycle riding, where I'm riding like when, when it's cold outside and observing uh, like I find that if I'm you know c freshly shaved my face is a lot colder um, than you know um, than if I'm not shaved and I'm sure that if you shave other parts of your body like your arms or your legs it's probably the same thing so uh, that's one final recommendation that I'll leave with you guys uh, now you might have noticed that I didn't talk about gloves um, so for gloves, those are kind of a personal preference, you know, like if you want to wear them, great. Um, I find that, you know, like when I'm fumbling around with my expensive eyepieces or, you know, like tightening um, like the lock screws on the diagonal or whatever, I, I don't really like to personally wear gloves. What I usually do is I'll take a couple of these, you know, hot hand packets, you know, I'll pair them up and I just put them in each pocket, you know, and actually when I'm observing, I'll just put my hands in my pockets, in my coat pockets, and I'll just grab the warm hands. So I kind of prefer that way a lot, I mean, because if you think about it, if you're doing visual observing, you don't really need to have your hands out, you know, for like a lot, unless you've got a manual scope that you kind of have to keep on nudging around, like a dog or something like that. So um, otherwise, you know, just any general gloves will work um, to kind of keep your hands uh, warmer. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. So I thought it'd be fun for you guys to see, you know, all this stuff on me. So um, a lot of times, yeah, when I'm observing and it is really cold outside, this is pretty much what it'll look like, you know, it's kind of like this. Um, you know, it might not be glamorous, but it keeps you warm. Uh, so hopefully you guys found these tips helpful. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, you consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.